Memory Space, the site of the final battle, reached after chasing Zanza at Prison Island, heavily resembles the vacuum of space. It is, in fact, a remnant of Zanza's memories. A mysterious space etched with memories ever since the Bionis came into existence. Though it appears to be in space, this world may be formed from the memories of Lord Zanza before he became a god. However, the final place to actually visit is Pursuing Zanza into the Bionis interior, the party suddenly finds themselves at a familiar, tall dark tower, Prison Island, once the home of an ancient and mystical giant race, now sent by the god Lord Zanza inside the Bionis. This island, which once floated over Air Sea, surprisingly is not surrounded by the flesh and blood of the Bionis. Instead, it continues to float and has come to life surrounded by a dense cloud of eerie red ether. This ether is continuously drawn in toward a single point above the island. The strangeness continues as on reaching the peak of the island and eliminating one of Zanza's three chosen disciples, there is no longer any ground beneath their feet, and yet they can stand, they can breathe, Asteroids swirl and explode around them, and the unfathomably massive planets of the solar system stand boldly before them. They marvel at the foreign objects and environment. To them, it is nothing but otherworldly. See, the Xenoblade world works quite differently to our own. There is no such thing as a planet, nor is there such a thing as a universe. No such concepts exist. There is only a world, one world, a boundless flat ocean, and an endless dark sky, and two titans, one staged with two actors. The sun is not a star, but a large ball of ether, supported in the sky with a day and night cycle. There is no concept of seasons. Stars are not massive celestial bodies, but small, nearer clusters of ether which often shoot out, literal shooting stars. The world is beautiful, but yet comparably simple. The word world means the same thing to them as the word everything. And so it means something quite different to them to say to go beyond this world. So what has Shulk and his friends done? <laughs> Call that corpse a friend. Don't make me laugh. It's been a long time since I last had this dream. I reached out for a piece of scrap metal. And then I fell into the ground. You can't do that because you aren't here. Not anymore. In my head, there are two versions of me. One of them is saying that. Listen to what Dunban said. What about the other one? It keeps shouting. Make them pay. Destroy every single one of them. And it won't stop getting louder. That doesn't sound like you. It's a bit of a loud mouth. And by honest, all life exists in a continual cycle and being born from and then returned to the Bionis, per the will of Lord Zanza. Ether is power. You are the source of that power. All life that is born from the Bionis dies and is returned to the, the Bionis. Bionis. Huh? Oh, right. What's born from the Bionis is returned to the Bionis. That's the way of the Homs. Unlike the Mekonis, the Bionis feeds on ether provided by those who return to it. Upon the moment of its eventual awakening, it will require an incredible number of lives. Falling into the ground draws direct metaphor to being returned to the Bionis, and so death. 
For Shulk, there is extra meaning from how the Bayanis is also the flesh of Zanza, the being which absorbed his soul and continues to inhabit his body. And so Zanza tells Shulk he's not here. Not anymore. Shulk was returned to the Bayanis, consumed by Zanza. Shulk is seen at one point, drifting in memory space, his eyes closed, body nearly lifeless, as though asleep. He has no perception of his location. This is in contrast to the second time Shulk is seen adrift in memory space, where there is full consciousness and awareness, and he instantly asks, where am I? In the first case, where he seems to be asleep, the perspective of the cutscene is not Shulk's. It wasn't something he was simply dreaming. How was that possible? Shulk was inside the Makanas at the time. The same thing happens again when Shulk is sent into what is essentially a coma after Zanza departs from his body. Shulk's body exists in one place, but his consciousness exists somewhere else. He won't wake up. It's like his consciousness has sunk to the bottom of a cold, dark lake. I keep saying his name, but he doesn't respond. Ah. Uh, so I'm... <laughs> what was I doing? What was the purpose of my life? The other instance memory space can be seen is with Zanza, using it as a place to reflect and observe the passage of fate. Again, Zanza exists here, we can see him, but Shulk asserts he is within the Bionis. Is it possible that memory space also exists within the Bionis? If you entertain the thought, it does give more sense of the party's path taken, that is, to enter the Bionis and head to the heart then agreed to go to Prison Island, which would be expected to now exist around the upper back. Logically, it would make the most sense for the final location they arrive at to also be inside the Bionis, rather than to have headed deep underground to then be transported up into the sky. It also makes sense for Shulk to be correct about his feeling, given it comes from his newfound subconscious understanding of the passage of fate. I told you before, right? I haven't had any visions lately. Yeah? But I still know, if I concentrate, I feel like something will happen, and it does. Are you saying you don't need a vision to know what comes next? Pull the other one. Ryan, you're going to scratch your head with your right hand. <gasps> Shulk, sure. you have acquired the ability to glimpse the future. The ability to understand the law of causality, as decided by a higher power. A higher power? The problem with this lies in the physical scale of the Bionis versus the solar system, with a truly astronomical difference. The only place that could hold such a large space would be Zenblade's sky. But Zenblade's world doesn't work like that, so... Where am I? Memory space is not a physical space, but a spiritual one. Given the direction the party was heading toward in the Bionis, it would most likely be located inside the Bionis head. And as if to show that, the light produced by the combined Bonatos starts here. Memory space. The name is not figurative. It is literal, and a double entendre. While it references Alvis's machine identity, it is also a space that holds memories. The memories of Zanza, the soul of the Bionis, stored in the mind of the Bionis. Remembering what was and is no longer. Not just of long ago, but of recent past as well. The spirits of Gadolt, Zord, Mumkar, and even Alvis's Telethia can be found, scattered across the solar system. It would appear that this is where the spirits of those past come to rest. So what does it mean when we see Shulk adrift here? Because... You aren't here. Not anymore. Jackpot. It was all for this day. In fact, 
There was never anyone called Shulk to begin with. <gasps> it is not just the bodies of life forms which hold ether that is valuable to Zanza. There is also the life energy. This is what Zanza consumes to restore himself at Aussie Tower, after all. The bodies are left untouched. The life of Bionis existed simply to serve as my vessels and my food. Bionis is nothing more than an accumulation of their corpses and life energy. This life energy, these spirits, are stored in memory space, inside the Bionis, beneath the ground. You could call it the spiritual world, or, due to its location, it might be fitting to call it the Underworld. Shulk was one of those whose soul was consumed by the Monado, by Zanza, by the Bionis, and so it drifted mindlessly for years, until eventually Shulk's mind was returned to it. But what happened from here exits outside the margins of fate. What was the purpose of my life? No. I've got it wrong. I was never alive. It was Zanza. All along. I... Everything I did was... Do you want to say... Pointless? <laughs> that voice... Nobody else can decide that. Only you 